Now to the abbey itself. There is a small hill covered with glass in front of the abbey, and that is believed that there might have been a small hut where Columba lived. This hill is called Torin Abba, which is Gaelic for Hill of the Abbot. Although the abbey buildings we see today were built long after Columbus' time, he is remembered here in many different ways. There is a small chapel behind the cross of St. John where people come to remember St. Columba. Relics of the saint, such as parts of his body, may have been kept there at one time. People still use this chapel today as a place for peace and prayer. If you look closely at the outside of the building, you will see stones that stick out at the bottom. These are the oldest parts of the shrine and may be part of another building, which could be over a thousand years old. The abbey church we see today was built in many years after Columbus' death and has changed a lot since it was first built. Much of the layout of the church and the oldest part of the monastery built about 1200 AD for monks who followed the teaching of Columba. Monks following in his ways came over from Ireland and lived in Iona till about 1200 AD. At that time, the Lord of the Isles decided to set up a monastery and nunnery. The monks followed the rule of St. Benedict and the nuns followed the rule of St. Augustine. These monks and nuns had a close link with the church in Rome. The abbey church today is bigger than it would have been when it was first built, but it is as much of the same shape. The darker stones that you can see is part of the 13th century Benedict Abbey. The Iona community was set up in 1938 by George MacLeod, a Church of Scotland minister. At that time, much of Abbey was in ruins and people came from all over Scotland to Iona to restore the building. Photographs of its reconstruction can be seen in the cloisters. As you walk toward the Abbey, on your right you will see St Oren's Chapel. This intriguing little chapel dates back to the years after 1150 and was probably built by Summerled, the man who broke the Norse domination in the Western Isles. Many of the kings of Scotland, Ireland and even the Vikings are buried on Iona. From Kenneth Bacalfin to Macbeth, they all made their final journey here across the Sound and up the road of the dead to the burial ground of the Relig Oran. Before you enter the abbey you will see two stone crosses. The smaller one is the cross of St Martin, which was carved toward the end of the 8th century and was dedicated to St Martin of Tours, who lived in France towards the end of the 4th century. He was a soldier of the Roman Imperial Army who became a Christian. He lived as a hermit while he ceased to be a soldier, near Poitiers, and then was elected the Bishop of Poitiers. How a cross dedicated to him came to be in, on an island up the west coast of Scotland is open to discussion, but there were many several Columban monasteries on, on Ireland with, with connections to the saint. The larger of the two crosses is St John's Cross, which probably dates back to the 8th century. Although its name is a modern invention, what you see is the replica of the original. What is left of it can be seen in the museum at the back of the abbey. Fragments of the cross head have been found and buried in the ground beside Orange Chapel. The replica cross was completed in 1970, when it was dedicated as a special service in the abbey. Your tour around the Abbey will now be taken over by the guide from Historic Scotland.